One of our John Fourcade specials this week is the Ford Holiday Sales Event. A brand new 2016 Mustang GTs, $4,500 total savings right here at Veterans Ford. Come on, man, you can't find a better deal. All 2016 Mustang GTs, $4,500 total savings right here in the heart of Metairie, Veterans Ford. We're back here on the John Fourcade Show. Mike, to tell you along with John Fourcade, John, uh, we talked a little bit about it in the first segment. Saints played hard, and, and I like the effort in this mm -hmm. game. Uh, they lost to a better team, and I do think you, what you saw in this game was the microcosm of what this team needs to do in the offseason. But 41-38, the ninth team in NFL history to go 12 and 0 to Panthers. I think they'll make it 13 and 0. They play Atlanta this week. You talking about a team that's going down to shoot fast? Panthers almost 500 yards of total offense, but Cam Newton, 331 yards passing, five touchdowns. But John, here's the thing: Ted Ginn Jr. dropped two of them right in his hands, and he missed Ted Ginn Jr. on two of them. I mean, it could have been a lot more yardage-wise for Cam Newton, but at the end, it was Cam making the plays. The Saints just couldn't get him off the field. Mike, we talked about it all year long. They just don't have the defensive help right. on the other side of football. When you're at 16-13 at a halftime score and you lose 41-38, to uh, it just goes to show you that, you know, there, there's some issues with this football club. And, it, it, you know, we, we, we talk about Brown all we want. Uh, if you and me and 50, 60,000 other people in that, that stadium can sit there and say, wait a second, if I'm looking at Brown and he's playing this bad, why don't they see it? But I guess, obviously, they don't have anybody else to take his spot because that's a weak link on defense. You were right. You know, Ginn Jr. could have had two more touchdowns. Uh, the way that the, the, the Panthers played in the second half, we were looking at this like, wow, this team's undefeated. And they really aren't the best team, I think, in all of football, but they play good enough to win football games. With that defense they have, and they just don't make mistakes on offense, this is the team you got to watch out for. The other thing, too, is the fact that in the first half, and we talked about it, you know, if this was 06, 09, 11 Saints, you'd have had 30 points on the board. All you have was 16. And in the second half, no pass rush. And, you know, we talked about this to Coach Payton Monday night. He was talking about that they had dialed up some zero coverage. Well, you know, Brandon Brown gets a lot of heat, but on a couple of those touchdown plays, Jarvis Bird was nowhere in the frame. Right. So you're playing zone coverage or you're playing zero coverage. If you don't get to the quarterback, guess what? He's going to burn. Ted Ginn Jr. is going to outrun Brandon Browner. And on a couple plays near the goal line, you were in zone coverage. Jarvis Bird's completely out of position. I'm not going to give him a pass on this. Listen, Jesse James had to wake up early in the morning, put that holster on, jump that train to rob it. He put his life on the line. Jarvis Bird's guaranteed $24 million on this football team. He's not hardly made any impact at all. And all the heats on Browner, you look at that game and uh, coaches film of it, it's just not Brandon Browner. Jarvis Bird didn't play well at all either. Totally agree with that. And, you know, but, but what, what you see in, with the penalties and his play, what they show on film a lot of times, is the Browner issue. I totally agree. Browner can't run across the field with anyone. No. Okay, he just can't run with people. He might be a better zone player than he is a man-to-man -man player. And the other factor is I saw some things on defense side. What are you doing to have Anthony? running against Ginn on the outside, Anthony's on the inside, a drag right across the field, your backside safety, which has not had anybody to cover, he runs up to cover air, and then they throw a touchdown on him. So there's some problems with this defense. And it's just communication, yes. fundamentals. Right. All of it is lacking. And, and, but what does that go to? Players. If, you know, if I'm the defense coordinator and I call something, I sure can't play it, but you got 11 guys out there you expect to rush the quarterback, play the right area you're supposed to be, and cover some people. If they're not getting it done, then who's at fault, Mike? It's the quarterback. I mean, excuse me, it's the defensive coaching staff and the coaches who bring these players in. you got to find, I, right now, four games left in the season, I'm playing leftovers to see if they can play for me. The thing, too, is Stephon Anthony had a signature game, yes. especially in run support. He made a couple big plays. Set but, a record. But, man, Greg Olson, he, he, it goes to show you a little bit to be the complete linebacker, how good you got to be. And, man, I think Stephon Anthony's one heck of a football player. He's done a great job as a rookie. But he got taken to the cleaners yes. by Greg Olson in some of those patterns. Uh, and, and that's part of the game he's got to learn. I think he'll get better at. Offensively, no running, rushing attack at all. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, Mark Ingram out for the season with a shoulder injury. So now this rushing attack, which has been stagnant most of the year, is going to rely on a guy that played five plays, C.J. Spiller, and Tim Hightower. Uh, who has been out of football for two years. So 
man, you know, you're talking about you becoming almost one-dimensional real quickly. That's what's happened with the injury of Ingram. And he had played a good season mm -hmm. from an all-purpose standpoint. Well, they brought Spiller in here for a reason. And uh, is it his but fault? But for what? Well, my point, I'm trying to get, is it his fault that he played five plays? Uh, I thought he played very well against Dallas when he hit the, yep. the play for a touchdown. And then from then on, you very seldom saw him play. You very seldom saw him get anything getting his way. That's coaching fault there. Another problem with the coach. They don't believe if he can do it, then why even have him here? You spent that money on him. I think the guy can still play. But you got to play I, I think give him the football. Watch what's going to happen. He's going to get his turn right now, and they're going to say, oh, wait, where was this all year long? And watch him go out, break some plays, do some things for the Saints offensively, but it's going to turn back to what it's been in years. They're going to throw 45, 50 times a game now because they don't believe in their running game. The other thing, too, is Spill is not a between the tackles type no. runner. You know, he's an edge guy, catch the ball coming out the backfield. But I think Sean Payton really likes Tim Hightower, and, and he has spoken highly of him every time he's had that opportunity. I think when the Saints are going to try to run the ball, I think Hightower becomes the go-to guy instead of Spiller. I think Spiller will split the carries as a runner-receiver, but I really got to believe that when they're going to want to run it, it's going to be Hightower rushing the ball between the tackles. Well, when you only run it 12 times, 14 times a game. So you can split that pretty good. <laughs> Mike, okay, who's back here running? When you only run it 12, 14 times a game, you can put you can bring back Chuck Muncy and those guys and see, bring back Dalton Hilliard. They'll be more than happy to carry, you know, six, seven times a game. But it's embarrassing to look at your offense and say you don't run the football enough to help, you know, Drew back there. He's going to get pounded in the rest of these football games if he has to throw 40-something times a game. Yeah, and that's what basically we're looking at. They also think, uh, you know, it's showing up, and we've talked about it almost from week one to today, the lack of a pass rush. Uh, it's just not there. In the second half, you saw Cam Newton sitting back there. A lot of times him moving around, he had a lot of time mm -hmm. to throw the football. And in this game, if you don't put pressure on the quarterback, you can dial up all the schemes you want. It's not going to work. You've got to be able to affect the quarterback's launching pad. They didn't do any kind of effect on Cam Newton at all. Well, you got a guy like him to move around, scramble. You don't put any pressure on him. One sack's not going to win your football games, especially with a guy like him back there. You know he's strong enough, big enough. You got to try to do something defensively, and it all balls down, Mike. If you don't have the players, you just can't play. That's bottom line. But uh, you know, one play, he kind of did a little lolly dagging as he went to the goal line, and Michael Marty lit him up, <laughs> but but good on that play. I don't know where the protocol for concussion was on that. But I'll guarantee you, he was knocked at tomorrow on that play. And uh, so it was one big hit by Mike Morty. We'll be back with more of the John Forcade Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Ford. Oh, yeah. Back in. Yeah. 